would, would tell you to use Paragraph and using Paragraph to do store every single box. Yeah, what's the difference between a div and span? Div and span. Div is a block level element, so it has the new line before and after, and span is an inline element, which means that it doesn't have that new line before and after itself. Does that make sense? Are you sure? Okay. Because I it's, it might be kind of confusing. It's okay to keep asking me. So you can control on how far apart is in your scans are. Sorry, can you speak up? Yeah, um you can control like can you control how far apart like different scans are from <coughs> Um sort of. Um you can sort of position them differently and that's gonna be talked about when we talk about CSS. Um are you talking about when they're like side by side. Oh, when they're side by side, yeah. they basically stick to each other. On default. Oh, they stick to each other. Okay. Yeah. Like, you, you can that with CSS. Yeah, with CSS, you can control the styling. Like, you can say, like, how far you want to, like, be apart, like, the borders or whatever. So all styling is done with CSS. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah, like, on default, they're going to be stuck together without any style. Yep. I don't know you said, um, um, they contain a lot of stuff. Uh, or they can, can contain a lot of stuff. Um, typically in web design, when you use divs, you're going to be using them to sort of style your pages. Um, so maybe, maybe like for example, on on the YouTube page, if you go to YouTube page, um, a lot of those elements uh, are sectioned off by divs. Um, so it's it's really like I said, the main difference is that you use paragraphs for text only, and divs are kind of used for it can be used for everything. Else. So that's not. So what you said is it's the paragraphs aren't only used for text. You can put like some images in there too, but they are like uh, if you think of like a newspaper, right? You have a paragraph and a column. You can have an image in there, but it just it's typically used for text. Divs are you know what does a div tag sound like? It sounds like division, right? So when you use divs in HTML. What you're actually saying is you're saying that this part of my page is separate from this part of my page. Outside of that, outside of just you know like what it means, divs offer our containers, and what that means is anything inside of it you can style it. So you kind of encapsulate text or whatever content you have, and then you can refer to it later with, H with CSS with an ID or a class tag, and you can apply certain styles to like a background image or a background color, uh, things like that, or a border. Um, so it, it is a little bit confusing right now. But when we get into CSS, it'll make a little more sense why you're using this stuff. Just for now, try to wrap around, wrap your head around the fact that you know the HTML tags by themselves are just kind of there to clue the browser in uh, to what your content is supposed to be about. So image is an image, P is a paragraph. You use different headings to, to specify the importance of different uh, different lines of text in your code, in your code, things like that. Like the way I see it, like aren't divs for like different functions of the website, like you have the menu, yeah. you have like the logo, and then you have like the content itself, and then like the footer. Yeah, exactly. So that's 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 perfect what you said. So divs separate out parts of your of your web of your web page, right? So it separates out, you know, um, what's a good example? Maybe you're, when you, that YouTube <laughs> that YouTube uh, screenshot that John showed up earlier, you have different parts of that web page, right? You have a toolbar at the top, the bottom you have footer, in the middle you have the actual uh, media player, and underneath you have certain tags or links about embedding it. So what a div says is it means it's it's the visions, right? These are clearly different areas in your in your code. So this is so you would use a div here, and you say this is the search bar, and you do use another div down here, and this would be you know kind of your content, and then within this you can have nested divs too. But it's just like a logical separator uh, between your code, and it's for the most part invisible until you use CSS. So this is a little bit technical, and it really will make more sense when we get in CSS. But it is, you know, div stands for division. So it just separates out your code, different parts of your code. Because otherwise, all your code is all in the same page, and it kind of just runs together. So div is just a way to specify that this part is for the toolbar, and this following code is for, you know, the image player, or the movie player, or whatever. Yeah, don't worry about too much about, like, what a div is right now, or, like, what things should be divs, because in the next couple of lectures, we'll be teaching how to teaching you how to recognize divs on websites and what logically should be divs to like better lay out your web pages. Are there any more questions? I know this stuff is a little bit dry and technical right now. We're just trying to 
kind of pre-teach and introduce HTML, um, the different elements that you'll be exposed to. And later, you know, the best way to really learn HTML is to be using it. So we'll have a lab, um, but beyond the lab, you know, when you guys go and create your own websites, you can refer to these slides and through practice, you'll become accustomed to what to use, when to use it, things like that. But we're just doing our best to give you an overview of HTML. And then uh, we'll give you some time in the lab to actually play with all of these elements, the lists, the uh, tables, the images, and things like that. Great. Okay, so uh, the next element that I'm talking about is unordered lists. And um, they're usually used when you're trying to, when you want to have delimited items. Um, so you usually, you start with this unordered list element, UL. And for each element that you have in that list, you would put, you would wrap it around the tags li. Um, and it looks like this. So you have the ul uh, opening tag, and we have your first element, our first uh, element in the list, which is your first item, and it's wrapped in an li tag. The second one is wrapped also in an li tag, and you end up closing it with a ul tag. So one of the impo other important things to take away from this is that um, this works in a nested structure. So what it means is that we have this tag UL here, which is actually encapsulating um, some other HTML elements. So uh, more on nested tags. Um, you, to understand this, um, you usually close, once you open a tag, you want to make sure to close it in reverse order. So in this case, you open a UL, and then you open an LI. So the next thing you want to close is an LI, and then a UL. Um, yeah. uh, and right here, um, blocks can contain inline elements, but inline elements can't contain blocks. So you can't put a div in a span, but you can put a span in a div. Oh, yeah. Uh, which spaces? Oh, the indention? Yeah. You mean? So it's good, it's definitely good practice to indent your HTML code. You don't want it to have, you don't want it to all be smushed in one line, even though technically the HTML browser will render, render that. It's going to make it hard for you to change these uh, HTML pages later in case you. Uh, you find out you need to update something. So, I mean, it's always good practice to make sure that you indent stuff to represent the nested nature of those HTML elements. Uh, the next thing is tables. So, um, table tags start with table, of course. Um, and you have these things called th, which are header tags. And uh, what header tags do is it's essentially the uh, the top the top bar of a of a table, and it's differentiated um, in the way that it's it's bold as opposed to normal text. Um, and in order to introduce a, a new row in um, in a table, you would enclose a row in tr, and all the little columns uh, you would enclose with td. So it's sort of similar to the uh, unordered unordered list element. Um, so you can sort of look at the TRs as uh, a UL and the TD as an ally that helps you um, understand it better. So it's, it's probably best to, to actually put this in your browser and open up something like Firebug or something where you can actually um, use your mouse to look over the HTML code to get a better understanding and better feel of this. It, it doesn't make sense to just look at this. Um, so in this example, um, this this HTML basically generates a three by two table um, with two rows and three columns each. Uh, one of the attributes that um, is important to have is um, call span. What call span does is sometimes if you have, um, for example, actually I'll, I'll, get, I'll get to the example in the next slide. Um, but what it does is it allows you to have a row that can that contains like one or as many number of um, columns as you want. So instead of uh, so, like one of the rules I have here is that um, for each row you have to have the same number of columns in each row. But with the call span, you can sort of 
in a sense, break that rule. Um, and what it's really used for is to make sure to have headers inside the middle of the table. Um, and also, it'll be a lot clearer when I show you the example in the next slide. Uh, the other thing is cell spacing and cell padding. Cell spacing um, specifies the space in between each cell. So a lot of times when you look at a table, you'll see that line in between um, all, those, all those elements in the uh, table. And that's specified by the cell spacing attribute. And the cell padding attribute specifies the amount of spacing um, between the text inside a specific cell and its surrounding box. Okay, so here's a more concrete example of what call span does. Um, so I have this HTML, it's a table um, with a border of one, which is why you see this thickness here. Um, and it has a table row right here, uh, which specifies a table, hall, table header with the call span of two. So uh, if you remember the rule, one of the rules I said is that um, each table row must have the same number of elements as all the other table rows. By having a call span, you're able to break away from that um, to create these sort of inline headings. So you can imagine um, having a larger table where you have multiple um, call span headers. And what it allows you to do is sort of break the table up into different sections, um, depending on what sort of display need you have. Um, and more simply, we have a, in the second row, we have a table data which specifies the name of the person here, along with the number of candies this person has. OK, so if you guys have done um, HTML websites before, like back in the day, you might have um, used tables to do your layout. As you see, it's kind of like logical, like here's a header, I guess, and like content and like a sidebar. Um, what we're going to do in this class is we're really going to discourage you from using these table elements as um, like the structure and layout of your website. We're going to use CSS and like divs and spans instead, which is a lot more clean and like gives you a lot more control over your code. Um, so tables, elements, or table tags should really only be used for things like that belong to a table, like data or something like that. Something that you want to re represent in data or represent in a table, not for layouts. Yeah. Um, so I mean, back to Alex's example where we talked about the YouTube page about how each of the parts of the YouTube page are separated into divisions. Uh, the bad way of doing that, which is sort of the old school way, is to separate like that top bar, that YouTube search bar, into one table row, and then separate all the other things in a separate table row. That's a very, very bad idea because it's going to make it's going to cause a lot of headaches in terms of being able to style that that uh, web page. So what you really want to do is um, make sure to use divs. Uh, when you're not using, when you're not trying to actually represent data. So I know it's, it's a little easier to see and imagine when you, use, um, when you use tables to sort of format things, but it's a horrible idea to, to maintain and design that sort of uh, web page. I think that's it. Yeah, I did, but Okay. Sorry, one more thing. <laughs> okay. Um, the last thing is, like I said, when you, I mean, one of the, I mean, when I started learning HTML myself, I found out one of the best ways to learn was to just go to a website. And um, if you have Firefox, you can download an add-on called Firebug. And what it allows you to do is basically use your mouse pointer, hover over things, and it highlights it in the HTML, um, in the HTML document. So uh, Chrome also has the same thing. Um, it's called inspect element. If you right click on it, uh, on some sort of piece on the page, it'll have a uh, section that says inspect element. And it'll be able to point out exactly which part of the HTML that, that, um, that's rendering that, uh, that piece of, HTML, or that piece of uh, web page. For so, um, Chrome and Safari, to do that kind of inspect element thing, you need to um, first go to the like, preferences and enable the developer's view. So don't be like freaked out if it doesn't work, you have to go and do the option. Safari? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so we're actually gonna go and go ahead and start the lab now. Just the uh, open up lecture and do the lab. It's a, it should be a fun lab. You'll actually in the lab you're gonna be able to create your first web page and upload it.